diversity. Biodiversity. Have you ever come across the word biodiversity? No. Yes. Yes and no. Hmm. Well, that's today's topic. Biodiversity is the existence of a variety of living organisms, plants and animals, from genes to species, in their natural environment. Different living organisms have different characteristics. These characteristics enable the organisms to adapt and survive in their environment. The place where organisms normally live and grow is called habitat. Grassy fields, gardens and jungles are examples of the various habitats that are familiar to us. Organisms appear and disappear. Sites are colonized by organisms of the same species or by another. These differences among the organisms bring about diversity, thus the term biodiversity. Classification of organisms What actually is the meaning of a classification? A classroom? No, 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 no. <laughs> Classification is the placing of similar objects into similar groups. Organisms are classified based on their characteristics, judging by the degree of similarity and difference. The classification of organisms will allow us to remember them better and also to relate them to one another. Hmm, animals, plants, they are the animal and the plant kingdoms. For this program, we shall talk about the animal kingdom. Animal kingdom. The animal kingdom can be split up into two main groups, vertebrates with backbone and invertebrates without backbone. Invertebrates Invertebrates are animals without backbones. They are often small. They cannot grow too large because they do not have the backbone to support their weight. Invertebrates can be divided into many groups. First, we have the spiny exoskeleton. The starfish belong to this group. Then we have the group that has gills. Examples of this group are the lobster and crab. Next is the one with many legs, <laughs> like the millipede and the centipede. Then we have the group that has four pairs of legs. That means eight legs. Oh, they are the scorpion and the spider. We have four pairs of legs. We also have three pairs of legs. The group that has three pairs of legs or six legs is insects, like butterflies and grasshoppers. I love butterflies and grasshoppers. 
tasty. Next, we have the group that has a soft body and protected by shells, like the snails and cockles. Then, we have the worms, for example, the earthworm and tapeworm. Next, we have the one with jelly-like bodice, with tentacles stinging cells. Examples of these creatures are jellyfish and sea anemone. Lastly, the unicellular creatures like the amoeba and the paramecium. You see, they are unicellular because they have one or a single cell. Invertebrates have a fluid-filled hydrostatic skeleton. You see, their skeleton is quite elastic and flexible, like the jellyfish a worm. Some have a hard outer shell, like insects and crustaceans. Delicious. Hmm. I'm sure you know what insects are. But crustaceans? Examples of crustaceans are crabs, prawns, and lobsters. Crustaceans are animals that have a hard shell and several pairs of legs. Invertebrates are the most abundant creatures on Earth. They make out more than 95% of all the animals in the world. <laughs> I bet most of you rarely notice invertebrates unless they're either in your gardens or on your dinner plates. Vertebrates Animals with backbones are called vertebrates. Vertebrates can be divided into five groups. They are mammals, fish, birds, amphibians, and reptiles. Mammals Characteristics of mammals Hey, look around you. The chances are that if you see an animal, it's a mammal. Mammals are the dominant life form on this planet. Mammals are large warm-blooded animals. Mammals have four limbs and they can maintain their body temperature. Their body is covered with either hair or fur. They breathe through their lungs. They have sweat glands in their skin to release sweat to the surface of the skin. Female mammals give birth to the young. They produce milk and suckle their young. Milk is produced by the mammary gland of the female mammal. Elephants and whales, horses, cattle, sheep, dogs, cats, and of course, human beings. That's you, are all mammals. However, some mammals are unique and special. Whales, platypus, are mammals, but they live in water. Platypus also has a beak and lays eggs. The scaly ant eater has a scaly body. The porcupine has a spiny body. And the bat flies. There are special cases 
in other groups of animals too. You'll find out soon. Fish. Characteristics of fish. Fish are aquatic animals. They live in sea or fresh water and they come in different sizes. Large, small, tiny. Fish are cold blooded animal. In another term, poikilothermic. Their body temperature changes with the temperature of their surroundings. Fish breathe through the gills. Their body is covered with slimy scales. They also have fins to maintain balance. Fish lay eggs. Their eggs are without shell. They use lateral lines to detect vibrations and movements in the water. Some species of fish, such as sharks, give birth to the young. Sharks and stingrays have bones made of cartilage. See, I told you so. Other examples of fish are eels and seahorse. But Characteristics of birds Birds are warm-blooded animals. They can maintain their body temperature. They breathe through their lungs. Their body is covered with feathers. They have a pair of feet covered with hot scales. Birds have a beak for packing food. But no teeth. Most birds fly. They have wings and feathers that help them to fly. They also have strong hollow bones and powerful flight muscles. They lay hot shelled eggs. Birds build nests in trees, on cliffs, or on the ground. They mostly use their keen eyesight to find food like bugs, worms, small mammals, and grains. But some birds, like the ostrich and emus, do not fly. Their bodies are just too big and heavy to fly. Penguins, eagles, ducks, hens, and goose are the few examples of birds. Amphibians Characteristics of amphibians. Hmm, amphibians, that's me. Spend part of their lives underwater when young, breathing with gills, and the remainder on land, breathing with lungs and skin. They are cold blooded animals. Amphibians have four limbs and webbed feet. Adult amphibians breathe through their lungs and thin moist skin. Their body temperature changes with the temperature of the environment. Most amphibians lay eggs. They lay jelly-like eggs in water. The eggs hatch into lava and undergo an amazing transformation or metamorphosis. For example, the frogs. I am a frog, and we frogs are special creatures. When young, we're called tadpoles. Tadpoles have gills and a tail, features that enable them to live underwater. During metamorphosis, tadpoles lose their gills and develop lungs, so they can breathe out of water. At the same time, they begin to grow limbs and lose their tails.
The end result? Adult frogs like me that spend much of their time on land. Other examples of amphibians are toads, salamanders, and newts. They are all my friends. Reptiles Characteristics of reptiles Reptiles are cold-blooded animals. Their body temperature changes with the temperature of their surroundings. Reptiles breathe through their lungs. Their body is covered with hard and dry scales that help prevent water loss. Most reptiles have four limbs except their snake. Reptiles often have one type of teeth. Their teeth are usually cone-shaped and sharp. Most venomous snakes have two sharp teeth that are called fangs. Reptiles lay soft leathery like eggs. Most reptiles live on land. Oh, I don't like snakes. They give me the shivers. Oh, and those fangs? I'm scared of snakes. Oh. There are a few species of reptiles such as the water snake and turtle that live in water. Examples of reptiles are snakes, lizards, and crocodiles. Let's do a simple concept map based on what we've learned so far. First, we have the term biodiversity. From biodiversity, we have living organisms. Living organisms is divided into the plant kingdom and animal kingdom. The animal kingdom is split into two, invertebrates, animals without backbone, and vertebrates, animal with backbone. Vertebrates are classified into five different groups. They are mammals, fish, birds, amphibians, and reptiles. Although vertebrates represent only a very small percentage of all animals, their size and mobility often allow them to dominate their environment. Vertebrates are easy to find. We coexist with many vertebrates and are often quite aware of them in our environment. For example, we have the domesticated dogs, cats and birds. Hear the sound? That's my stomach. Time to catch some invertebrates for dinner before the snake catches me for his dinner. Yeah, the snake, a reptile that eats me. I, the amphibian, eat insects, invertebrates. Now, that's biodiversity. Bye-bye.